anywhere near a radio, you've certainly heard the voice of my next guest. Her hit single, Gloria, is on its way to the top of the charts. Here is Laura Branigan. Welcome, and thank you for being thank with you. us. You were just saying, where was that? Yeah, that. Don't you? Oh, uh, d do you remember? Don't you remember doing that, or was it? <laughs> I mean, I do. But I mean, do, what, do you perform? Have you performed a lot live? Is that the type mm -hmm, of thing that you? All summer. Really? Where were you this summer? I was all over the country singing in the clubs. Because Gloria's real big. You know, it came out of the clubs. We, when we were looking at the album, and it's a fabulous album, all down the line, every song, but the, the songs were, the album was released in April, and mm -hmm. suddenly it's, we're in September, that suddenly there's, it's the top of the charts. Mm -hmm. How, why does it take so long, or why did you have that lag? Well, um, it takes a while for new artists to, you know, to break in, and I think what happens is you release a song, and in order for the people to relate that song to the artist, it, it just takes time. It's like getting to know someone, you know. How did you find the song? The song was originally an Italian hit five years ago, recorded by Umberto Tozzi, um, sold 30 million copies in Europe. And uh, my producer, Jack White, and uh, co-producer Greg Matheson were, uh, uh, well, actually, Greg worked on the, the song in, with Umberto, and Jack was uh, his German, and he was in Europe uh, while Gloria Fever was going on, and he brought the song to me. I said, "What do you think?" And uh, we five years ago, though. No, oh. just for this. For this, this I mean, it was was successful. Yes. Five years ago. Thirty million copies. That's quite a lot. How do you feel about the comparison between your voice and Donna Summer's voice? Because they're both glorious and the wide ranges, and I love it. Do you? That's mm -hmm. lovely. Because I was always a big fan of hers, and I heard it. There's a similar quality in the, I think, the deepness of the voice. Um, my mother once was driving along, this is about two years ago and I didn't have a record, and uh, that song, you know, heaven knows not the way, was on the radio yeah. and she's like, <laughs> she thought it was me. Really? Really? Your own mother? Mm -hmm. How long have you been singing? I guess about six years. And? Since high school. And did you, I mean, how did the record contract come about? Did they, because if they bring you a song, it's quite unusual for the producer to just bring a song to a really an unknown artist. How did that work out? How did the, how did, how did you get the song and how did the record contract work out? Did you have the song first? Did no, you have the record we had, contract I or? had, uh, I was signed to Atlantic Records by Ahmed Erdogan. He's the chairman of Atlantic. He heard mm -hmm. about me and asked me to sing for him and I did. And then we went about finding the right producer and we found Jack, and then we started putting the material together. I'm always curious when uh, someone of that stature asks a young performer to sing, what, how did you do the audition to get that record contract? What, what, was, what happened in that? I, what did I actually do? Yeah. Well, I went up uh, and sang with a piano player. I sang one song. Just and you and a piano and no backup, no drums, no... No, nothing. And just the two, and he decided there and then that That's he right. liked your voice? He said, "Sit down, honey." <laughs> was it? Were you? Did you prepare for that though for a long time, or were you? Did well, you know I, how important it could be that it could be the pivotal thing that made your career? Of course, a record contract is very important. I um, didn't realize who I was singing for. I mean, he's a real legend in the business, and uh, but you could, I could feel it. You <laughs> when I was standing there in front of him. I know your personal taste runs a little bit more towards Edith Piaf than Deborah Harry. What what kind of music do you listen to? Mm, I like uh, Billy Joel. I, li I love Edith Piaf. I love Billy Joel. I love a singer that sings from their heart, from their soul. That's the most important thing to me. You know, if, if you can just feel the emotion jump out. That's why I loved Edith Piaf. I think she had that, and I think she won over um, millions of people just by her heart. I know uh, that, that you're studying drama, really, in New York, and that you have been doing that for a mm -hmm. while. Do you think that that has brought a new dimension or a different dimension to your singing than, say, just a singer who hasn't? Uh, I feel that I had that to begin with. I think, um, of course, it brings it out. It helps, you know, mm -hmm. tone it up, and it just makes you more comfortable when you have, you know, acting experience and have studied. You know, it helps you bring out the... Dramatic, yeah, I guess so. For, <laughs> so right. for a, a young girl in the record business, is it as difficult as we all hear about? And is it tougher for a woman? <laughs> um, I don't think it's tougher for a woman. I never thought of it that way, but I think it's um, very hard for a new artist. Very difficult, first of all, to get a contract today because of the business. And um, it's very competitive. 
and it's but there know. you didn't find a lot of sexist type of um, no. things that we sometimes find I no I think it's different for an artist than maybe someone who's working in a bank or, mm -hmm. because artists are all on the same level you don't male or female yeah. it's you know you just bring That's out right. your talent the best you can I don't think that you, I never even thought of that kind of discrimination no, or never. anything. I never ha really have come up against that. Or if I did, I just didn't, didn't know it. Have you been getting the support as far as the p uh, press relations and that sort of thing? Because I know that all the record companies have cut back on what mm -hmm. they spend, not only to launch an artist like yourself, but even some of their established people. So how is that? Well, the Atlantic's you? been real good to me. I can see they've been terrific. But I mean, did, was there one reason that they were? I mean, was it because they saw the song or was it because were you just lucky or because there are some people artists who have very good singles out mm -hmm. now who are not getting the backup support that they need to get the hits well, I think what's very important is the record company but you have to have good management and that's I guess you <laughs> would you feel a lot of pressure coming up with a follow follow-up to uh, Gloria yeah <laughs> uh, I think we've got it though really what is it I'm not <laughs> No, wait. I, well, I think it's on the album now because I have. There was a songwriter here, very darling girl, who said that, uh, what's the song, If? It's that, what's the song? And I think she said that it might be the next single. She did. That's yes. A, that's no. If You Love Me. Was yes. By that's Diane a, Warren. Yes. And it's a beautiful, uh, it's, a beautiful song. It's a <laughs> They're all possibilities. They're all great. And I love the album. Thank you very much, Laura, for Thank being you. with us. I really enjoyed it. Thanks a lot. Next, we have Missing Persons. And Michael Medved is going to be talking about, with them after this.